Hey everyone, welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. This is Wendy. Today we're going to be participating in a Look for Less challenge hosted by Yami over at the Latina Next Door. She's awesome and has all kinds of farmhouse DIYs and everything you can imagine. So check her out. Also, according to Kat, Kat is another amazing crafter who loves the farmhouse style so go check both of those girls out and i will link their channels down below so the way this works is we choose a product that we would like to have but don't want to pay the crazy prices out there this wreath is not that expensive but it's 35 dollars, and i'm thinking i can do it for less i would pay 35 dollars for this if i didn't want to make it myself but to make it i'm using some dollar tree items and i'm starting with a splatter screen that you find in the kitchen area a package of the metal words it says happy easter blessings in the easter section some miscellaneous greenery the real one is in blues and we're going to be using purples and pinks these flowers i got at hobby lobby and they were 50 percent off and then some waverly white chalk paint my glue gun scissors and wire cutters and so the first thing we're going to do is to open up our packaging and take off the handle that's on the splatter guard and i just used a phillips head screwdriver and unscrewed it and i'll probably keep this handle and use it for something else but i went ahead and painted over the metal words and i just did a dabbing effect because i'm going to let that dry and then paint over it again and that way the paint will adhere a lot better now normally i would put my flowers on first but in this case i need to make sure that i cover up the hole that was left by the little handle so i'm going to glue down my words first and then i'll know where to put my flowers and since this is like a screen material the hot glue will go through so after you push it down and into place make sure you lift it up so that it doesn't stick to your work surface Now I'm going to start collecting my flowers that I'm going to use and I'm just cutting them off and giving myself a little bit of stem so I have something to adhere it to into the glue. And if you can see there's some little sprigs sticking up here and there. I don't have any greenery like that so I'm going to use these white flowers and that'll give me I think enough of the look to kind of mimic those springy stems that are sticking here and there. So I'm just going to cut off a few of those stems and hot glue that around the rim and I just kind of form it into a circular shape so that it goes around the wreath and then I'll just use a few dots of hot glue behind the flowers so that you can't see it just to get it to stay around the form. Now I'm going to start adding my different flowers and roses and in the inspiration picture it's a lot thicker in the middle and then kind of tapers towards the sides. So I'm going to use the larger flowers that I have and make those kind of be the base of the piece. So these purple ones I actually got at Michael's and they were on sale for $5 for the bunch. And so these are nice and really sturdy flowers. So I'm just gonna take a couple of those and hot glue them down and then take some more of the light roses and add those in along with some of the yellow Dollar Tree. I don't know what these would be called, but I just start adding in all over. But I think it's easier just to kind of watch and you get the idea of how I'm tapering it and then making the colors kind of go all over the place and 
not necessarily evenly distributed, but just your eye will tell you where something needs to go and where you need more color or less color or a different type of flower. I wanted to add some more white in there to match the words. So I found this hydrangea and this is from Michael's. My niece used it in her wedding some years ago. And so I just had these on hand and I cut them apart and just added little sprigs here and there to break up the color and to make it coordinate with the words. And then to add a little bit of the darker green, I took some of the rose leaves and added those in as well. And then I'm going to add some purple berries that are from the Dollar Tree and just put those where I think they need to go as well. And then to hang it, I just took a piece of paddle wire and stuck it into the screen at the top and then twisted it so that it would stay. And that's what I'm gonna hang it from. And here's our inspiration piece from Kirkland's for $34.99. And I do love the blues and the pretty colors that it has on here, but here's ours. And we only spent $9.50 and I think it has the same feel of spring and the beautiful colors and flowers and so for a fraction of the cost I think it was definitely worth it.
For our next Kirkland's Look for Less project, I wanted to try and recreate this succulent wreath. And it's really pretty and I do like it, but it's $109.99. So if you want to jot this item number down, it's 176327. But for me, I will not pay that. So to start with, we're going to use a 14 inch wreath form from Dollar Tree, some Proflora moss that's self-adhesive and you can get this at Walmart it's about four dollars for a package you could use the Dollar Tree moss sheets but I'll show you that doesn't work some succulents these are individuals from Dollar Tree I got 10 of them and they were of course a dollar each you may be able to get them cheaper like on Amazon but I'm not sure so then we'll have our glue gun our scissors a Pair of wire cutters and so the first thing you want to do is wrap your wreath form with the moss but this was just too crunchy and wouldn't wrap around the form without breaking so the pro flora was a lot more pliable and easier to use especially because it has the adhesive sticky back and so that sticky is super sticky so it stayed really really well and so i just cut it in strips and then just wrapped it around and i didn't have to use wire or hot glue or anything this adhesive is just no joke so I went all the way around and I didn't have a whole lot of it it was a partial package so I kind of just had to piece it together which you would have to do anyway because you're going in a circle so after I got it completely filled in and covered the empty parts with pieces that I had left I started getting my succulents ready and so I just cut off the stems and pulled out the picks and got them all ready. And so on the inspiration piece, there were a bunch of greens that were kind of flowing in and out of the succulents. So I had this piece, well, a few of these pieces that I had left over from Hobby Lobby when my daughter's room was decorated in a boho theme. And so I pulled those out and stuck those around just so that that would be kind of a secondary base that can stick up between the succulents and not make it look like it's just a bunch of succulents. So I just hot glued those around here and there. And then I started with my larger succulents and I had five of these particular ones. So I wanna spread those out evenly so that there's not too many of the same type just in one spot. So I used quite a bit of hot glue and then just stuck it into the moss and went all the way around with that. And then I went back in, I had two of the really pretty blue ones. I'm gonna put those you know, far apart from each other so that they're not right next to each other. And in the Kirkland's piece, all of the greenery was just green, kind of a darkish green. There was a little bit of whites here and there, but you could totally paint all of these pieces in a dark green to match more like that piece. But I decided to just go with what these were because I thought they were really pretty and I really do love that blue. So these pieces, I don't know what they're called, but I was running low and still had some areas that I needed to cover. So I just pulled those apart and stuck those in different places just to fill them up. I really like the way these kind of flow around the pieces. So now you see they've got these little berry type things. I don't know what they're called, but I just used these from Dollar Tree that were on other greenery pieces and just stuck those here and there just to fill some more and give it another dimension. And then I finally went in with some other greenery, again, from my daughter's boho bedroom, which she's changed three times since then. This is our younger daughter, our youngest daughter. And so I'm just going to wrap that in and out and throughout. And so here's the inspiration piece in all its $110 glory. I, I really do like this, but again, I'm just not going to pay $110 for this. I'm not sure who would, but <laughs> I know I could get it cheaper somewhere else, even without making it. But here it is all done. And so this one costs us about, when I say us, I mean me, I guess, <laughs> about 14 or 15 dollars 
And so I'm counting the pieces that I got from Hobby Lobby from my daughter's room because chances are you don't have that on hand. So, but I love how this turned out and I love the different colors. And again, you could paint it all a darker green so that it looks more like the inspiration piece. I really don't have any boho style decor in my house. So this is gonna be going to our older daughter. Christine so she loves that style I think it's kind of a younger style but I I do like it I just don't have it so I really had to search for something to stage it with oh and one other thing the inspiration piece was 20 inches whereas this was only 14 inches so there's that but I think it turned out super cutie patootie and I hope you guys like it And for our final look for less project, we're going to try and recreate this chandelier planter. This is actually from Kirkland's and it comes in a set of two. I had planned to do two of them, but since I ran out of time, I only did one. And so we'll say that that one costs $78. So I got this chandelier a while back at a yard sale for $5. These you can find anywhere nowadays on the Facebook marketplace or at the Goodwill or yard sales. They're really kind of a dime a dozen nowadays. And then I got two packs of these planters. They're plastic terracotta. And then I have some white, black, burnt umber acrylic paint. And then I got some orange acrylic paint there wasn't even very much in there so I had to add water just to get a little bit out of it but you will need some orange paint of some kind and then our glue gun some gorilla glue our wire cutters and our scissors and so the first thing I did was kind of take apart everything and just using a flathead screwdriver I took the sockets out and used my wire cutters to disconnect it all. This had been outside hanging from one of my trees for the bat, I guess about three years now. So it was really crusty and dirty and icky. So the hardest part of this, I think, was actually cleaning it up and getting it ready to paint. But after I took the sockets out, there was a little piece of metal that kind of stuck up and some wires. So I had to fold the, that down and break it off and then cut the wires out. So it still had a piece that was sticking up. And so luckily there was a drainage piece that came with the little planters. And so I cut off the top of that plastic piece and then magically it sat right inside there so that my planters would then sit straight. So then I cleaned it with some soap and water and it was in bad, bad shape, but that's okay. We're gonna give this new life. And so I just wiped it down and made sure it was very dry. And then I want to give this a rusty look. And so I took a really old, rough, bristly, br <laughs> bristly, <laughs> let me try that again. I took a really old, rough, bristled brush <laughs> and started pouncing with the black acrylic paint. And then I went back in with the same brush that still had the black on it and went into my browns. And so it's just gonna keep blending and making it look better and better the longer you go. And then finally, you'll add some orange just here and there very light touches and blend that in as well. I started with it upside down so that I could get everything, but when you put it in different angles, it is easier to see the pieces that you missed. It may even be easier to start by spray painting the entire chandelier black because then you have a base and there would be no white showing at all. But I didn't have any black spray paint and this was just easier for me. So I can sit in my craft room and just paint away. This was actually a fun project to do because as you all know, I'm not that great of a painter. So for this technique, it was easy because you don't have to be perfect. Thank goodness.
For the terracotta pots, I wanted those to have a little bit more of the orangey color showing through. So I just went in with the black paint and the brown using the same method of pouncing on it. But then I took a paper towel and kind of dabbed it off so that it would have some of that orange poking through. And then I went in and painted the top ledge of the inside of the pot. Eventually, I end up painting the entire inside just to give it a uniform look, I guess. But while the paint was still dry, I went in with some white and just very lightly added some white, I guess, calcification and made it look a little bit lighter so that you could tell the difference between the chandelier rust and the terracotta rust or faux rust I should say. So then after that on the inspiration piece you'll notice there's some metal pieces that are kind of holding on to the pots and so I didn't have anything that would replicate that so I just went ahead and took my black acrylic paint and used a skinny paintbrush and just made a line all the way around the rim and that was pretty easy because the rim kind of guided my hand and so it doesn't have to be perfect but it was a pretty straight line and then I made four or five of the lines going down and again there are lines on the plastic pot so that it was easy to follow those. So now I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue, which is the same as E6000, and that'll give it a permanent hold. And then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and go over that for the immediate hold. And I'm putting my little drainage piece on the bottom of that. I'm not going to glue it into the chandelier because I don't want that to be permanent. In case I attempt to actually put some real live plants in here, I want to be able to take them out and do the planting somewhere else and then put them in. So in the meantime, and just for show now, I'm gonna put some fakies in there. And so I just cut some little pieces of floral foam and popped those inside. And then just took some scrap pieces of greenery and just stuck those here and there until I got it to the way that I wanted it to look. So here's the inspiration piece again from Kirkland's website and I do love the way this looks. This one's not exactly the same but I think it has the same feel and poor Michael J was having to hold this up with a hook because the sun had already gone down and so I couldn't hang it from the tree that it was originally hanging on. So I think though I'm going to put this inside instead of outside because it's just so pretty and it's I think a mix of farmhouse, rustic, um, just everything all in one and I love it. And it doesn't hurt that it only costs ten dollars to make. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to go check out Cat and Yami on According to Cat and the Latina Next Door. And tell them I said hi. Put a flower or something in their comments so they know you were there. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to this channel so we can grow it. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!